on behalf of department of microbiology hey, hey, medical hey, college hey, hey, and nair hospital hey, hey, i welcome hey. you all for the live webinar on coronavirus disease 19 countries response and future direction session 2 i thank all the faculty and all delegates who have taken their valuable time out to participate today i will now invite program director dr jayanti shastri ma'am professor and head department of microbiology to give the welcome address over to you ma'am a very good morning uh, to all the luminaries who have joined the webinar our keynote address is going to be by professor balram bhargav who is the secretary department of health research and director general icmr our additional municipal commissioner mr suresh kakani our director medical education and health dr ramesh bharmal who is also the dean of this institute dawn of 2020 we the world woke up to the news of a new virus causing pneumonia and we were totally taken by surprise and it caught us unawares in january we had a lighthouse and that lighthouse was in the form of the indian council of medical research guiding us all through january we were in fact started we started the testing at kasturba hospital which was the only lab in mumbai doing rt pcr test and we started with one lab in mumbai on 25th of january when we were guided by the national institute of virology to commence testing ever since then we know all the efforts taken by our national leaders constantly reforming the guidelines and showing us the way this is in fact an a special program on the occasion of centenary year celebration of topiwala national medical college and bbyl nair hospital to express our gratitude to our national leaders for all their efforts i still remember sir you had given me a call around the month of april early april and you said that this is my number this is my mobile number if you require anything please give me a call so that was such a heartening uh, effort and i can tell you that united we stand as a family we have leveraged all our strengths in bringing out all the efforts possible to combat this pandemic there were lots of unknowns in this but of course with the guidance of yourself sir and uh, kakani sir in mumbai no effort or no stone was left unturned in uh, addressing all the issues and we will hear from all of you what we did towards the prevention and control of the pandemic so this was like a mission mode talking of our institute the motto of our institute is vidya nu rugve mukte through knowledge we shall conquer disease so this is this program will guide all the policy leaders all the medical fraternity to understand what it really required for our national heroes our luminaries to take all the necessary measures required for prevention and control of the pandemic with these few words of introduction i request our director medical education and major hospitals dr ramesh bharmal to please introduce the institute to our uh, speakers and our participants good morning sir good morning uh, i welcome dr professor bhagwa dg icmr honorable kakani sir our additional municipal commissioner and the in charge of the health of mumbai corporation all eminent scientists and dignitaries and friends attending this webinar sir i would like to speak a little bit about the history of the this twin institutes we take a immense pride that our twin institutions topiwala national medical college 
and BYL Nair Hospital have been the first institutions founded on 4th September 1921 by the Indians for training Indian medical students as a part of the non-cooperation movement started in the pre-independence era. Over the years, these institutions have grown enormously and have been instrumental in providing quality health care and medical education to the society for the past 100 years. This institution has many firsts to its credit, counting more than 50, being from the first Indian Medical College in 1921 to first dedicated COVID-only teaching hospital in 2020. And we have already started a first genome sequencing lab in public hospital in 2021. Many first are in the offing in this centenary year, sir. I am thankful to Dr. Bhargava, sir, for consenting to guide us on this centenary auspicious occasion. Dr. Shastri, please introduce, sir, to this August gathering. Thank you. Sir, it is indeed our privilege, pride, and we express our heartfelt gratitude to you for uh, addressing all of us and guiding us and sharing your experience. Tomorrow is our foundation day. And September 4th, 1921, when the college was established was the day of Ganesh Chaturthi. And uh, it was established with the uh, Tilak Swaraj funds uh, initially in 1921. And there is the upcoming Ganesh Chaturthi again. So we're taking the blessings of the Lord Ganesha and Goddess Saraswati, we begin this program. May I please have the CV of uh, Professor Balram Bhargav? It is indeed with great privilege that I introduce our keynote speaker of the day, Professor Dr. Balram Bhargav, who's, been, who's a professor of cardiology at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. He serves as the executive director for the Stanford India Biodesign Center School of International Biodesign, Director General, Indian Council of Medical Research, Com Secretary, Department of Health Research, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India since 16th April 2018, an outstanding cardiologist, one of the foremost leaders in biomedical innovation, public health, medical education and medical research. During his tenure as faculty at AIMS over over 25 years, he has treated about a quarter million patients and trained over 200 cardiologists. Excellent leadership qualities. Yes, sir, we have seen that all through the COVID-19 pandemic has established the School of International Biodesign at AIMS, which is a unique interdisciplinary fellowship program to foster innovation design in low cost implants and devices. Five of the low cost devices are, the, are there in the Indian market. He has developed the indigenous platinum iridium coronary stent and has been instrumental in clinically evaluating and establishing the use of medicated Indian stents. He set up the CGMP Center for Excellence for Stem Cell Studies at AIMS, which has, which was initi has initiated treatment of patients with dilated cardiomyopathy. He is currently providing leadership for creative uh, disease prevention, early detection and transport system for sick cardiac patients, Mission Delhi, Delhi Emergency Life Heart Attack Initiative by trained motorcycle first respondent paramedics. So you are, you've always been the first responder. He is an innovator par excellence with innovations touching everyday lives with very huge social impact for which he has started the Society for Less Investigative Medicine. He has published several papers on harmful cardiovascular effects of chewing tobacco and is evaluating the continuous blood pressure of uh, the Delhi Transport Corporation bus drivers. He has led two major trials in India funded by the National Institute of Health, Bethesda, USA, which has changed clinical practice. He has pioneered several techniques in interventional cardiology. He has been awarded the SN Bose Centenary Award by the Indian National Science Congress and National Academy of Sciences Platinum Jubilee Award, 
Tata Innovation Fellowship and Vaswik Award for Biomedical Technology Innovation, Rambaxi Award and the Opi Basin Award in the field of health and medical sciences. He is the founding editor-in-chief of the British Medical Journal Innovations. Sir has been awarded the Padma Shri and the UNESCO Equatorial Guinea International Prize for Research in Life Sciences at Paris. He is the recipient of Dr. Lee Jong Wook Memorial Prize for Public Health 2019 by WHO Headquarters, Geneva. So thank you very much for allowing us to share your CV because it is such an illustrious CV and we want everyone to know that our national leader who has guided us all through the pandemic is going to speak to us. He's the keynote speaker and the topic for today is India's fight against COVID-19, the role of Indian Council of Medical Research. Over to you, sir, Professor Dr. Balram Bhargav. Thank you so much for the very kind words. Uh, Dr. Uh, I welcome uh, Dr. Jayanti Shastri, Dr. Ramesh Pamral, Dr. Uh, Mr. Suresh Kakani, Dr. Pradeep Awate, all the, uh, the, uh, the doctors and the staff of uh, the uh, Topiwala National Medical College and the, the, uh, the Nair Hospital. At the outset, I'd like to express uh, uh, congratulations for the centenary year for this uh, great institution. We have had uh, excellent, uh, as you have already mentioned, and the Dean also mentioned, uh, the, the response by, by your hospital, Twin Hospitals, uh, and the Medical College has been so phenomenal. We have been able to get the pregnancy data, the pre-COVID pre -COVID registry, which was run entirely out of uh, the Nile Hospital and the TNMC, and that was published, uh, the data from that was published in the uh, uh, National uh, Indian Journal of Medical Research and also in some international journals. And that led us to uh, know what is the problem of COVID with pregnancy and was very informative. The most important paper for the country for, uh, for pregnancy that was contributed by, uh, by your institution. I congratulate you and thank you for the same. And the other important uh, was the biorepository, which was created by you and you have worked 24-7 to, to work with the COVID testing and, and helping out with the next generation sequencing, et cetera, for, for the whole pandemic. Yes, it is, a, it is a big country, but we have all worked together and we have uh, uh, delivered, but still uh, the, 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 the war is not yet won. So we have to continue our guard and continue working. So I will uh, just give a, a, a presentation and uh, hopefully I should try to complete it in 30, 35 minutes. Um, which will, and I'd be happy to answer any question. I'll just share my PowerPoint presentation. I hope you can uh, see this. Uh, yes, now. sir. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. so um, now we will talk about why the pandemic occurred uh, this year and uh, uh, what were the reasons. So this century has witnessed uh, um, several exotic viral infections more frequently and more complex. We have seen SARS, we have seen MERS, we have seen Ebola, we have seen yellow fever, we have seen Zika, Nipah, and now COVID-19. And, 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 uh, and uh, Nipah has been twice in the last since I've joined at uh, uh, ICMR in 2018 and a very high mortality with Nipah. And why are we witnessing this? This is all because of tremendous amount of uh, um, extreme connectivity, tremendous amount of travel, and um, the change in environment and ecology, which has been responsible for the global warming. And we are all seeing the effects of this global warming uh, by heavy rainfall, landslides, floods, uh, uh, and, and cyclones in, in different parts of the world with also uh, fires, forest fires. So this has been a tremendously um, um, terrible year, not only year, but for the last, this whole millennium, this century, we are seeing a lot of this global warming and also the polar cap also vanishing. So this is, here we have to, uh, as uh, an individual, as a society, as a nation, as, a, as, a, as, as, as a citizens of the world, we have to be responsible citizens uh, to uh, prevent global warming. Uh, we have also been um, not spending enough money on public health and that has also been responsible for 
uh, these uh, pandemics that we are seeing. So I think with the new um, uh, announcements in the budget and, 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 and extra funding for research, extra funding for healthcare, for public health, will probably change the way uh, we look at things in India in the, in the near future. So uh, why the India's response, how it has been, if India is a large one, the largest democracy with respect to people's voices to calibrate its intervention measures. So the country has been serious from the beginning. Our pandemic started slightly later than the Western countries in, in March last year. And we had some time to learn from the international experience of January, February, March last year. So it was a whole of government approach, which was calibrated, proactive, preemptive, and a graded response. It was science driven with best practices, with a strong leadership, with excellent communication with all the states uh, all along the pandemic over the last 18 months. And it, uh, we stuck to the 5D strategy, which is test, track, trace, treat technology, and the 6D, which the prime minister says is TICA, that is the vaccine. And we always, from the beginning, resisted the concept of herd immunity, which was tried in some countries in the uh, in the beginning of the pandemic, which started and tried in parts of USA, tried in Sweden, tried in uh, uh, in the United Kingdom, led to higher mortality and issues. So we have uh, not uh, we have resisted the concept of herd immunity right from the beginning and have been con continuing with the 5D strategy. So I will, in from the ICMR's perspective, we have done two major things. One is the testing infrastructure for the country. And the second is the vaccine development and more others, which will be the science part of it, which I will briefly tell about. It. So we have uh, we have uh, 52 pro samples tested to date. We are testing 17 to 20 lakhs per day. Now, yesterday was 17 lakh tests. And a national average is about uh, more than 1,000 tests per million, which is the WHO recommendation is 140 tests per million. And they say, if the positivity percentage is more than 5%, try to keep increasing your tests as much as possible. But we are doing 10 times the test recommendations as by WHO, and our national positivity rate today is less than 3%. We have brought down the cost of the RT-PCR test to, uh, with all the RNA extraction, as well as the, uh, the viral transport medium and the kit to all three combined to rupees 135 per test. And we have also, uh, reduce the cost of the rapid antigen test to 50 rupees per test. We uh, initially in March, we had very few laboratories. We just had a small viral research laboratory network of the ICMR. And we decided that we should have a laboratory in every district. So we created 14 mentor institutes all across India, uh, uh, which were institutes of national importance who were mentoring the labs in their, in their region and, and the medical colleges. And uh, we set up labs in difficult terrains, uh, with, which is Ladakh, Leh Ladakh, Northeast, Andaman, Nicobar, and, uh, and the, uh, the, the Lakshadweep Islands. Uh, 522 of 542 medical colleges are, have a lab, and all districts have rapid antigen testing facilities. We took a single step on, on June uh, 16th, uh, 2020, where we did a Gazette notification that all medical colleges should have a BSL2 laboratory uh, for MCI registration. And, and that, because of that, we got 522 out of the 542 medical colleges having a, 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 a RT-PCR laboratory BSL2 facility in the institution. And that was the backbone of testing in India. We included private laboratories by a notification on 21st March, 2020. Uh, so there, there need no registration for private labs in India was there, total numbers were not known, NABL accreditation was optional. So we uh, had, uh, we realized that once they get with ICMR, we joined hands, we took virtual lab tours during the lockdown, handholding and got fast track approvals for the private labs. The molecular tests initially were the standard RT-PCR, then we were able to get in some of these high throughput machines. However, the costing uh, we realized is very expensive uh, for doing a test in the Cobas machine. Then we also talked about, we had the TrueNAT machine, which I will talk about, CVNAT, Abbott machines, and more recently, the CRISPR test, rt lamp, uh, et cetera. So the TrueNAT machine was a machine which was developed uh, by uh, the, uh, the startup from, uh, from uh, Indian Institute of Science. And then they set up the, uh, the company in Goa, funded by DBT initially. And then we did the entire validation and testing uh, for their TrueNAT test for tuberculosis. And this got a WHO pre-qualification by an international study continued uh, con uh, uh, conducted by ICMR in several countries 
and that got it a WHO pre-qualification. Subsequently, we said that the molecular test could be used for NEPA, and this we did for the first time in the world. We first time demonstrated it for leptospirosis, and also first time in the world demonstrated the use of TrueNAT machine molecular uh, diagnostics for uh, COVID-19. And, and this was in uh, March, April of 2020, and a similar point of care molecular test was developed in the United Kingdom uh, and approved in September, October called DNA Nudge. And our, our, uh, our paper uh, regarding our testing facility with the TrueNet was uh, mentioned in the Lancet that uh, we have 2,530 TrueLab workstations that are operational at a thousand sites, which can test within four, uh, 45 minutes and, and, and give us the results. So this was a game changer as far as the smaller districts were concerned, smaller towns and, and villages were concerned where this, uh, this uh, um, uh, TrueNet could be carried uh, and did not require electricity at some time. It was battery powered as well as, and we could use it uh, for sample collecting and testing. Although the number of samples tested by this machine are not very large per, per day, but it can still uh, be used for, uh, uh, for, for doing testing in uh, resource uh, constrained settings. We did, did set up high throughput laboratories with a capacity of 5,500 to 4,000 samples per day at several uh, institutions across India, North, South, East and West. But these are expensive uh, high throughput laboratories because the cost of testing is expensive. Mobile RT-PCR, we joined, had a joint initiative with Spicel, and this was in the third wave of Delhi in uh, November, December, that we uh, set up these laboratories with RT-PCR machines, three of them in each one of them, and, and they were placed at different parts uh, of, of, uh, of remote areas of Delhi, and now and they also help uh, in Maharashtra, Kerala, and also in Uttarakhand. We became self-reliant uh, in uh, the testing kits and uh, the, uh, the more than 24 ICMR approved validated centers have evaluated more than 1400 diagnostic commodities. And because of uh, the um, internet in, in, in February last year, we were begging for testing kits from different parts of the world. WHO did give us uh, some test kits at that point in time. And, and then we, we had our own startups uh, develop these kits and we got them validated very rapidly. And, and uh, we had uh, the cost came down from uh, from uh, 1700 odd rupees to 135 rupees for uh, viral transport, uh, RNA extraction, as well as the RNA uh, 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 RT-PCR kits uh, to 135 rupees in May 2020. And, and, and this was a game changer again. Uh, we, we had import dependence to export surplus. Until January, February, we exported uh, 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 several lakhs VTM kits, 104 lakh kits, 949 lakh uh, RNA extraction that and 494 lakh uh, RT-PCR kits till January. And then we again restarted uh, exporting in July, August uh, to uh, about 65 uh, uh, crore kits to be uh, exported till October this year. So this is uh, how export surplus. And during the initial part of the lockdown, that is from March 24 to May 31st, we had the Ministry of Civil Aviation, Indian Air Force, and the government of India implemented a special mission called Mission Lifeline Uran, which was a 24 seven mission. And at that point in time, we were we had a bubble uh, at ICMR. We had the guest house, we flew in the scientists into our guest house, about 40, 40 of them. And we were working at the ICMR headquarters till 2 a.m. every day, seven days a week to arranging for consumables, testing commodity, medical supplies to various parts of the country through this Indian Air Force, Indian Railway, India Post. And, and, and special flights were commissioned to ensure timely delivery of commodities across the country. And this was a 24 seven mission, which was really, um, I mean, at now I can in retrospect say it was, it was uh, I think an excellent uh, uh, endeavor of the government of India to, 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 to do this mission. And with ICMR, we were able to do that. Uh, we calibrated our expansion strategy. Initially, we were just testing uh, travelers in February of 2020. Then in March, we started testing contacts, sari patients, healthcare workers, and travelers. And then gradually, we started pool testing in April, and we got TrueNAT in April. Then we started testing clusters, uh, uh, symptomatic uh, returnees or migrants, uh, hospitalized ILI patients, pre-surgery in June. And then September, it was testing on demand, and, and uh, we did pregnant women, high-risk people, atypical. So it was available on demand. And, and we set up a testing laboratory in Iran in, in February, this was another uh, 2020, which was another uh, 
a problematic uh, 6,000 Shia pilgrims from India had gone to Kum, and, and, and there uh, uh, we had to collect samples from. So we had to set up a lab, and the Iran government did not allow us to set up the lab in the city. So we set up in the basement of the uh, Indian embassy in Tehran, and we collected the samples from five cities. And then we were able to buy special flights operated by Indian Air Force and Iranian airlines. We repatriated all the negative people and the positive people were kept there for some more time for quarantine. And they were also transported back to our quarantine centers in, in India, in Hindon and Chawla and other places of the BSF. And, and then this was uh, where we, we were able to do this testing. We also collected samples from Italy, from the ship in Japan, and also from Wuhan. We lifted our air, the students uh, from Wuhan as well as from uh, Italy after the samples were sent here. We also set up 24 ICMR institutions, which were 20 ICMR depots for seamless distribution of, of these kits. And this was done because uh, at the beginning, there were kits available only at NIV and alicotting was done there at NIV Pune and sent uh, from there to, to entire country at the 20 depots and then to different uh, different. And we were able to have a, 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 a web-based system for inventory and demand forecasting. We had a, a testing data portal, which was created and it's the largest testing database portal having done more than 52 crore tests in the country over that. And that's hosted by ICMR. And since April of this year, we are also collecting the uh, vaccination data of all the people who have been who come for testing. The capacity assessment and matching procurements were done by projections, by tendering, by order fulfillment, and uh, the, uh, and on, on the government e-market. And this was uh, a, a huge exercise, which was streamlined the procurement process with the various robust projection models, and also by government of India using fast track uh, tendering platform. Uh, we have been maintaining the QA, QC of these laboratories all across the country. We have designated 38 QC uh, laboratories and we have a WHO PT panel from 2021, which has been testing all our laboratories, which have 93% of them have passed with excellent uh, uh, quality for these laboratories as well. Now we have about 2,902 laboratories across the country with more than 7,000 RT-PCR machines and more than 3,800 true NAT and CB NAT machine and 12 high throughput COBAS machines. And we have 165 approved RT-PCR kits and 43 approved rapid antigen test kits. And again, rapid antigen kits we started in June last year during the first peak of the Delhi uh, COVID-19. And, and then it was later appro uh, approved by WHO in September, October, but we had already started using them in a big way. And that was another innovation, again, where India led the world clearly. We started home testing and, and approved that. And for rural testing, we had mobile uh, van, testing vans, uh, one mobile van for 10 villages with a rapid antigen test. This was more so for the second wave where we had to do rapidly test and do home isolation. And therefore this was anyone positive was immediately home isolated. Anyone who was symptomatic and negative was sent for RT-PCR testing, but then our rest was asymptomatic. So here a massive scale of, uh, uh, of screening was done. Uh, with, at all the PHCs, uh, CHCs, subcenters, and uh, with uh, the rapid antigen test was the backbone. So uh, I would like to say that during the first wave, the backbone was RT-PCR test and the TrueNet all right up to the 2020. And in 2020, late 2020, early 2021, and during the second wave, it was a rapid antigen test, which was the backbone. In terms of research oversight and uh, dissemination, we constituted a national task force on the 18th of March, 2020, with experts from uh, different parts of the country uh, and uh, with under the chairmanship of Professor Vinod Paul and myself and the health secretary were the co-chairs and we had uh, different divisions of uh, different committees under the national task force for calibration of testing strategy initially to advise the government on lockdown containment strategies to develop advisories on discharge policy, uh, recommend required clinical trials, explore newer uh, treatment options, and develop clinical protocols and oversight for ongoing research. The research guidelines advisories were evidence-based advisories for uh, mucormycosis we have seen recently, but for uh, how bereavement, how to handle bereavement, how to handle psychological problems, uh, how to, um, and, and we had four, uh, five, rather five, now the fifth issue of the a special COVID issue of the Indian Journal of Medical Research uh, published uh, data in, uh, on, on COVID from across the country in different parts of the world. 
So we have and uh, now uh, in our scientific research, we have been able to publish more than 250 papers as we speak across uh, different in public health epidemiology, clinical research, diagnostics, uh, traditional medicines, viral variants, and these are uh, all uh, have contributed to the world scientific literature, all on PubMed and, and, and in very, very high impact journals. We had an international symposium on ethics of vaccines, uh, which was done in July of last year, wherein we, dis, uh, we had all the top experts from the world guide us on the ethics of vaccine, uh, and, and we had a, developed the vaccine portal of India. And I would recommend every one of you, uh, if you find time to visit the ICMR COVID website, and also the vaccine portal, and also the testing site. International Symposium on One Health was done on the 12th of April with uh, the Wellcome Trust uh, and uh, the CDC, etc. as partners. Uh, we we uh, are now developing an Institute of One Health at Nagpur with a BSL-4 facility, which has been announced by the Finance Minister uh, in the budget announcements. In terms of therapeutics, we have the National Task Force, which I mentioned, with the, which was notified to the Supreme Court, and we have the Joint Monitoring Group doing periodic evaluation of evidence, hydroxychloroquine for prophylaxis, for treatment, remdesivir, methylprednisone, dexamethasone, and tocilizumab were, had some available evidence at that time. Uh, so we, these were uh, approved at that uh, initial uh, point with the also anticoagulants. Uh, we also uh, have first did clinical trials on BCG, two, vaccine, two trials in convalescent plasma, which is the largest trial ever conducted in the world rapidly done within during the lockdown within a period of three months, published in the BMJ, which clearly demonstrated that convalescent plasma. In terms of ivermectin, this was uh, included as may use, but has now been removed from the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the uh, testing protocol, uh, from their treatment protocol of the uh, NTF and the Joint Monitoring Group. Uh, we did not find a, a effective evidence of or recommendation of favipiravir for indomethacin for BAM, BAMLANIVIV, ESTEMIVIV, and MOLNUPIRAVIR, and BARICITINIVIV, and 2TG. So we did not approve these from the National Task Force and Joint Monitoring Group, waiting for more evidence before we can include them. In terms of insufficient safety evidence, etolizumab, using candle stem cells, and colchicine were not included. In Valacin plasma, we know that it had several concerns because of uh, harassment, guilt of patients, profiteering, and we had uh, uh, adverse events, development of variants. And therefore, we did the largest trial called the PLACID trial across 39 hospitals, which were, uh, uh, I mean, which the entire trial trial was done by a video conferencing, done every week, twice a week, uh, between ICMR headquarters and the 39 uh, public private hospitals, guided them, 464 patients, randomized them, and, and we this was during April 22 to 14th July, this is 2020, and we published that in BMJ, clearly demonstrating that no therapeutic benefit of convalescent plasma in preventing progression of severe disease or mortality. And, and then we had the recovery trial from UK and the plasma trial from Argentina and remap cap clearly demonstrated in the meta-analysis in JAMA demonstrating that uh, convalescent plasma is not working. The WHO solidarity trial, we had 14 sites and more than 1,000 patients were contributed from from India, and we demonstrated that remdesivir is not working. However, we are still on discussions whether to remove it from the protocol or not yet. So that those discussions are still ongoing, uh, looking at the solidarity trial results. We are also participating in the solidarity plus trial. Human monoclonal antibodies were developed, and they are still in experimental stage, have not been found to be very effective, uh, but we are still looking at this. Uh, equine hyperimmune globulin serum was uh, tested by us and we we uh, we developed uh, the uh, hyper equine uh, immunoglobulins and that was published in immunotherapy uh, however we are not able to find too much of clinical utility for this we screened more than 100 antiviral compounds uh, natural synthetic compounds and repurposed drugs and really to be frank with you we have not found anything which is of major uh, clinical benefit in terms of clinical studies we had the COVID-19 clinical registry and we had the preg COVID registry in which your hospital and medical college has contributed uh, immensely. The, uh, the, the first wave and the second wave was compared and we found that uh, there was no major difference in the age. However, zero to 19 years was slightly different. Um, it was 4.4% versus 3.8% in the first wave. So it was higher 
during the second wave and uh, 20 to 39 was also higher uh, in, in, the, in the second wave. And we had, the, this is the, the symptoms, the presenting symptoms during the first and the second wave were more or less simple, similar, except shortness of breath was more in the, in the second wave, uh, clearly. This, uh, when we compared requirement of oxygen was higher in the second wave, 50.3% versus 43.2% in the first wave. And the requirement of ventilation was 15.9% versus 11.1%. So, so in terms of mortality, uh, it was higher in the second wave in all groups, except it was 13.3% versus 10.2%. Now these are hospitalized patients and we had lower proportions of admitted patients who had comorbidities in the second wave. Higher proportion had shortness of breath, higher proportion developed ARDS, higher proportion required oxygen and subsequently mechanical ventilation. In terms of outreach, we had this management protocol, a single page management protocol, which was the AIMS ICMR COVID National Task Force and the Joint Monitoring Group of Ministry of Health. And, 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 and now this is, I think, uh, it's a living document which is modified regularly. And more recently, we are going to remove ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine from this uh, protocol. However, we are still debating on remdesivir uh, from this protocol. We created the home management guidelines for home isolation and care for COVID-19 during the second wave, translated it into 14 languages, and it was distributed across, uh, across the country. And this was very helpful uh, for, for the laymen as well as uh, for uh, uh, health workers uh, for, for guiding the patients. We, evidence-based uh, advisory for mucomycosis was the first given by us, uh, and then uh, the Ministry of Health has adopted it and has been using it. In terms of surveillance studies, we, we, uh, we developed the indigenous ELISA way back in April 2020 uh, and was first licensed to Cadilla uh, and, and then now seven other countries. And this was the uh, ELISA kit, which was used in the first uh, uh, zero survey. And subsequently we did three more rounds of zero survey in May, June, August, September, December, January, and June, July. And we know the prevalence was 0.7%, 7.1%, 24.1 and 66.7%. And this was done in the same 70 districts, same 700 villages and wards in the 21 states uh, with the 10 villages per ward and selection based on population to proportion to size, very scientifically done and published in Lancet Global Health, IJMR and International Journal of Infectious Diseases. And the fourth paper is uh, the fourth uh, zero survey is under uh, a final review at the moment. We developed the Indian National SARS COVID Genomic Consortium with partners from uh, uh, different inst uh, uh, institutions of DBT, uh, CSIR, ICMR, Ministry of Health. And now we have more than 30 uh, sites uh, of, of, uh, in this consortium with the central coordination at the NCDC and the Ministry of Health. And we are doing uh, genome sequencing. We've done more than 80,000 genome sequencing and we're trying to do more than 10,000 per month and hopefully increase that uh, genome sequencing numbers very soon. Uh, in terms of genetic sequencing, from March to August, we did not find any variant, and this was published in viruses. Till August, we didn't have any variant, and subsequently, we started developing the variants. We had the variants of concern from uh, the Alpha variant in December 2020, uh, the, the, which from returnees from UK. This was published in uh, infection in 2021, and we isolated the virus. We cultured it. We were the first country to culture this virus and also test the efficacy of the vaccine against them. Then in February 2021, we had the Zeta variant, which is the P2 from the UAE returnees. And then in February 2021, we also had the Delta variant from Maharashtra in Mumbai, Pune, and Kola. And, and, and in February 2020, we had the Beta variant from South Africa returnees for, to Mumbai. And these were also have been published. Uh, they have all been cultured and their uh, vaccine efficacy has been tested against all these variants. In terms of sewage surveillance, we established the the method for sample collection and standardization was done and this was published. And, and subsequently, we have started surveillance initiated at three polio sewage sample sites and expansion to nine sites, um, uh, mostly in the Mumbai city in the 19 wards. And that is going to be very useful. And they are now expanding it to nine, nine sites. We uh, did the largest study on SARS-CoV reinfection, uh, wherein we uh, did phone calls of uh, to all our uh, uh, people who had 58 out of 1300 individuals at that 
So we gave a clear cut definition for reinfection, which was published in Epidemiology and Infection, that 102 days was essential uh, for, for uh, you have to have a period of 102 test positive, 102 days and then retest positive, and that is reinfection. We developed the CSIR and IDBT and ICMR biorepositories all across the country for samples. In terms of the COVID vaccines, and this is the other major thing which we have done, we, uh, we know for a vaccine development, we have to have preclinical studies, we have to have in small animals, then preclinical studies in large animals or monkeys, phase one safety trial, phase two safety trial, uh, phase one is for safety, phase two is for immune response, and phase three is efficacy trial. Normally it takes four to five years, but we have been uh, able to do it very rapidly for this. So these are the front runner vaccines which are being used in, across the world uh, with, with efficacy. We have Chadox with 70.4, COVAX in Bharat Biotech, 78%. Uh, which is in the main Lancet, uh, uh, Pfizer, BioNTech, 95%, Moderna, 94%, J&J, 66.3%, Zydus, Candela, 66.7%. So these uh, are the uh, vaccines which are being used. In terms of ICMR, we have uh, provided the virus strain to Bharat Biotech. We have characterized the vaccine. We did the preclinical studies, technical uh, uh, phase one, phase two, and the phase three studies. For Serum Institute, we did the phase two and phase three studies for AstraZeneca as well as uh, Novavax, and for Zydus Candida, we did the preclinical studies in in in, in uh, non-human primates. We isolated and characterized the virus, uh, in, uh, and was published in the Indian Journal of Medical Research um, in March of 2020. And 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 we did the electron microscopy of this. We were the fifth country in the world to isolate the virus. We also uh, uh, isolated the alpha virus, alpha variant, zeta, beta, kappa, and the delta, and they're all published um, uh, in terms of the characterization uh, properties. We did the preclinical studies in small animals, mice, rats, and rabbits, right up to 28-day follow-up, showing the safety uh, of the new adjuvant which has been used. And this adjuvant is algel, which was, uh, uh, was uh, because of which uh, the has not been used anywhere else in the world for the first time that uh, uh, adjuvant was used. And, and this featured as a cover story of high science uh, 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 that is a novel adjuvant that has been used and is responsible for the immune response as well. Then we did the co uh, hamster challenge studies right up to 65 days and demonstrate and did a dose finding and, and were able to uh, further do the monkey studies or the challenge studies. And this was a huge task for us because we had to do, we do not have breeding facilities in India for monkeys and there was a lockdown. And during the lockdown, we all the monkeys had gone away to the forest. So we had to uh, get special permission and capture monkeys from the forest. We did that from Telangana border, from Maharashtra border with uh, Karnataka. And then we did, got those monkeys in air conditioned cages at uh, at uh, the BSL-4 laboratory in uh, uh, in Pune, which is the first laboratory in Southeast Asia region set up in 2011. The second is Wuhan laboratory set up in 2017. So there we did the monkey challenge, wherein we gave the first dose of the vaccine on day zero to the monkey. But before that, we had to see the health of the monkeys. We did their uh, x-rays, we did all their blood tests and, and, and IGRA tests. And then we did give the first dose of the vaccine on day zero, second dose on day 14. And on day 28, we did bronchoscopy of anesthetized monkeys and did their, uh, give them the viral virus culture into the third generation bronchi and then did uh, bronchial lavage every day, collecting the samples uh, from a, a, a bronchoscopy. A, bron a, a chest specialist was flown from here to Pune, and also CTC Pune helped us uh, with uh, collecting these and uh, doing bronchoscopy in these uh, anesthetized monkeys on for seven days continuously. They were sacrificed later, and and then uh, electron microscopy looking at various things. This paper was uh, uh, sent to Nature. Uh, however, they had some uh, reports of these that these monkeys were not from a breeding facility, so they wanted, they had, they had received some letters from NGOs in India, uh, wherein they, they were told that these monkeys were not from a breeding facility. Then we wrote to the journal, sent the health certificate of each of the monkeys and the paper got accepted uh, with some delay, ultimately nature communications. So then we did the phase one clinical trial and the phase two clinical trial, uh, both published in Lancet infectious diseases and the phase three trial on the largest trial in India of 26,000 participants with 78% efficacy. We had the preclinical studies, mouse, rabbits, rats, published in iScience with the cover story on the talking about the new adjuvant that was used 
for the first time uh, by, by, uh, by Bharat Biotech and ICMR for development of this vaccine. Monkey study was published in Nature Communication, hamster studies in eye science again, and the comparative study of the monkey studies was published in IGMR. In terms of the clinical trial, the phase one and phase two have been published in Lancet infectious diseases, and the phase three is accepted in Lancet, and we've got the proof, should be out within a week's time in the main Lancet itself, so with an editorial as well. In terms of neutralization of SARS-CoV-2 by Covaxin, we conducted uh, various uh, uh, studies at Alpha, Beta, Delta variant and showed uh, that these vaccines were affected with some reduction in activity uh, with these variants. And these have all been now been published in various studies. In terms of sharing and partnerships, we have shared the virus with the various uh, agencies for developing the ELISA test, for developing the anti sera for vaccine development, for R&D to various government institutions as well. And, 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 and uh, inactivated antigen of the virus has been active, given to various uh, companies as well. Uh, we have uh, several patterns for COVID-19 during 2021, which have now been published. We have uh, been doing responsible data sharing with uh, all agencies, PMO, NDMA, NCDC, NIC, and anyone who wants to do uh, 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 with the uh, uh, diagnostic laboratory change, NDMA. And, and, and this is how the state uh, COVID apps sends information pathways, the diagnostic send the labs send their direct data entry, and this comes to the national testing database. And then we share it to various agencies for disease trends, policy making, resource planning, clinical decision making, with, with, the, uh, with the principles being that responsible data sharing, misinterpretation, and, and data should, should not be done. We have coordinated with the interdepartmental network for examining novel claims because we had everyone uh, uh, saying that this is going to work and this is going to work. So we developed a full consortium with DBT, CSIR, DST, and ICMR. And with this consortium, we were able to test more than 600 novel claims for drugs, traditional medicines, disinfectants, devices, UV, fabrics, gloves, AI tools, technologies, and others, and, and, and gave, up, gave their resolved reports for, for these novel claims. It was a whole of the government approach with the cabinet secretary, the Ministry of Health, state governments, the drug controller, national accreditation board, the EM, um, national disaster management, other science technology medicines uh, agencies, and center for health informatics, state surveillance officers, districts of health. So it was a whole of government approach where in India has, has worked together in a, in a major way and demonstrated that together we can. And in the, this is my last slide where we lost 28 colleagues of ours uh, during this pandemic of the second wave and some during the first wave and we remember them humbly and, and for their contribution for helping Indians uh, uh, and the country and the world at large for bringing the science forward, developing the vaccine, helping the testing facilities and uh, uh, making India uh, a very, very uh, uh, comfortable position. So I thank you for your attention because attention is the rarest and the purest form of generosity. Uh, thank you so much. I'm happy to share. Thank you so much, sir, for this comprehensive talk and walking us through this journey uh, of ICMR's uh, response in the COVID pandemic. Sir, actually, Nile Hospital was the first public hospital to join the Placid trial. We were the first to uh, publish on uh, reinfection series in Frontiers in Medicine. In fact, Lancet had kept it for six weeks, and uh, then we had to move on. And uh, we are uh, the Satellite Institute, Kasturba Hospital is doing ILQC for 41 labs in Mumbai. And uh, sir, other thing which I would like to definitely share is we have done five zero surveys. Three of them are population based. And the largest which we did in the second wave is a pediatric zero survey, where we demonstrated that more than 50% of the pediatric population have already developed antibodies. And uh, the other thing, sir, uh, which is uh, very close to our heart is the immune signatures project, which we are doing with NIRRH. Uh, so this collaboration was in fact uh, initiated by our honorable additional municipal commissioner when uh, NIRRH scientists presented that they have the strength to do the T cell immunity and uh, we have already enrolled 50 patients with 90-day follow-up 
and we have there both antibody studies and T cell immunity. And this is completely funded by the Tata Sons. And sir, tomorrow uh, on the occasion of our foundation day, uh, Honorable Chief Minister will be inaugurating a center of excellence in immunology research. And uh, this is going to be in collaboration with NIRRH because uh, we've really fostered this collaboration. And uh, yes, sir, the way forward seems to be that, uh, you know, medical colleges where we have the cases and a lot of data, we need to foster these collaborations. And our additional municipal commissioner is very, very positive about high quality research. And uh, because of that, we have had so many publications from our own institute. And tomorrow, in fact, we are releasing a book on uh, two years publications, which have been uh, in many international journals also. So as uh, we look forward uh, to uh, guidance from you, so we also expect that you please strengthen these collaborations with your own research institutes and the medical colleges, which can bring out very high quality research. At an individual level, sir, I'm collaborating with all NIV scientists and uh, other uh, scientists of uh, ICMR institutes. But I think somewhere there has to be some institute uh, collaborations, which can uh, bring out uh, very high quality research. With these few concluding words, sir, uh, would you like?